thank you, Raphael, for the kind uh, introduction, and thank you both Raphael and Sean and, and Eva for putting together the conference. It has been lovely, and uh, my head is full of ideas. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Katie, to make sure that the words can be heard outside this room too. So thank you to you too. Um, the title of my presentation is the Finnish Bill on Fundamental Animal Rights, and I will now take you to a civil law system because there is my uh, knowledge, and I, in in Finland our system is based on a mixed system, often called the Nordic uh, um, law system, because uh, it's a legal system of its own. So, and, and our work in the Finnish uh, Animal Rights Law Society is based on, of course, the understanding of our own uh, legal system, but also on the, our best understanding of animal law and special, especially the core of animal law, in other words, the best interest uh, of animals and, and uh, their perspective and using the legal tools available to promote their legal status and fundamental animal rights. And of course also the understanding of EU law as the member state of the EU and the Finnish law as such. As information, we don't have a constitutional court in Finland and our constitution is reformed in 2000. So we have a quite new constitution and, and maybe also general people, not only lawyers and legal scholars and judges, are used to discuss the constitution, which I remember especially my colleagues in the US when I say we are going for the fundamental uh, rights, they are saying, what are you doing? But they are not the only one. I have a lot of co colleagues that have had at least difficulties with this kind of developments. Personally, my work is also flourishing from the pain and shame of uh, the pain from what we are doing to our common fellows on this planet. Uh, during my doctoral thesis, I wanted to really understand what the provisions in the Animal Protection Act or legislation in general means uh, from the animal perspective. So I have been working on different farms, always a couple of weeks at a time, visited almost all the slaughterhouses at the southwest coast of Finland and also been uh, shadowing um, the police and regional animal protection authority when they are doing the control of uh, animal transportation. And it was devastating to see uh, how we are, especially those animals we are using in the food production, that the law what is left for the animals, it's the ink on the paper, the black on the paper. So uh, that pain have forced me to develop in my best understanding in a pragmatic way and combine the theoretical understanding of the law with the pragmatic work we are doing. The shame comes that how little is left and how inappropriate our legislation is because we know as a fact we have never had so much legislation both on the EU level and national level aiming to protect the animals from negative human impact. So something is not working. We are putting a lot of resources, a lot of energy, a lot of work into that legislation. And I would say we have never caused so much suffering, at least to that amount of animals we are doing today. At the same time, we also know that how we are treating and, and using, op uh, oppressing, exploiting animals, it's connected with the uh, climate crisis, biodiversity losses, 
pandemic, so no cis, public health in general, not to mention what we are causing to the animals. So, I mean, how is it possible that we have human rights and no animal rights? So, from this real reality and understanding, um, I um, understand fundamental animal rights as I present it today. Uh, I mean direct and applicable fundamental animal rights that are recognized in the Constitution, in other words, on the highest level of norms. Uh, I'm not talking about the indirect provisions in the constitutions that are rec recognizing human rights or gov governmental duties towards animal or animals or species or nature, nature in general. So in, in our proposal or, or the bill, we are, to, we are trying to frame and, and uh, uh, propose concrete animal rights uh, uh, and my presentation I will give you a little bit more of the background and then also tell you where we are going right now or where we are at, uh, at the moment with the bill and then uh, I will do some cherry picking in the sorry uh, in the in the content of, of um, the bill. So why fundamental animal rights? And of course, fundament, fundamental animal rights uh, written in the constitution, they have some consequences. And as Olivier Lebot uh, excellently have summarized, uh, uh, they give refer reference for interpretation of other provisions in a situation of conflict. They may limit other fundamental rights may repeal acts that conflict with the fundamental rights, they incentive the act to act on behalf of animals, they limit actions that are harmful to animals, and they may be helpful in a situation where, where a conscientious objection is needed. And with this understanding of uh, the constitutional rights, in 2015, in the end of the year, um, after inspiration and hours of uh, discussion with Stephen Weiss, I contacted my colleagues in, in Finland and actually in the beginning also in Sweden, but we were then separated because we understood that we need to draft the proposal or the bill in our mother tongue, so it's not possible to do it in English together. Uh, and the Swedish group is not existing anymore, so we continue with the Finnish group. And um, 2016 and, and 17, uh, we drafted the, the first draft of the bill on fundamental animal rights. We were all, all in all together seven uh, legal scholars working almost two years uh, with uh, the proposal. Um, uh, the aim was to define what the recognition of the sentience of animals that is laid down in the Treaty of the Functioning of the EU, Article 30, I'm, I'm sure you are all familiar with that, what it means in Finland and to concretize the substance of uh, fundamental rights of animals on the constitutional level of law and to lay down the principle of precaution, the principle of necessity, and the principle of proportionality within the context. And when we uh, ended this work, we send it to our colleagues, constitutional law scholars around the globe, and some judges too, and, and, and received some comments, and we reviewed it again, and then we were thinking, oh, what are we doing now? We have the, the document, and, but we are legal scholars. So how should we do with, with, the, with the text? And then we decided to, to establish the Finnish Animal Rights Law Society on Valentine's Day in February 2018 for the campaigning and lobbying of the, of the proposal and to develop the animal law education as a legal discipline in Finland. Three of us, Vita uh, Kurti, who you see in the middle, Tare Koskela, who is beside me in the picture, 
we are all working at the university as uh, legal scholars, so we are also in the education. And at my university, Obo Academy University, uh, uh, introduction to animal law is in the curriculum today uh, for becoming lawyers. And in total, we have 11 animal law courses for students to participate, which of nine is uh, open online courses for everyone uh, in cooperation with the Open University. But students can also uh, study animal law at the Helsinki University and the University of Eastern Finland. So uh, then what happened? Uh, we, uh, we established the, the NGO, but we didn't have time so much to... We, we established a website and, and tried to be acting on social media, but it didn't feel so comfortable. Um, but every time the media was interested, we of course gave interviews and, and were speaking and, and uh, giving presentations. And in November uh, last year, the MP Mike Kivela from the left party, she uh, made a law motion and took our proposal as it is written. Um, and, and filed it to the Parliament of Finland. We knew when she did that, that it will not be a success story because we had the parliament, parliamentary election in April 2023 and the new parliament always starts from a, so to say, empty table. So we knew that it will not be as successful as such, but of course it got a lot of uh, um, attention in the media. We are also in a good position in that uh, way that um, because we are legal scholars and lawyers, um, media, they want to hear our voice. So, and also parties, so the Green Party, Social Democrats, uh, left wing, they have been without us taking uh, contact with them, they are contacting us, which is a really nice position to, to have. So we knew uh, that the, the law motion will not be a successful story as such, but uh, of course it can be filed again by an MP or by a citizen's initiative, and then we decided to, to start the citizen's initiative in February this year. And, and, um, we have six months time to collect the 50,000 um, signatures that are needed and after that uh, we can file it to, to the parliament. This morning we had uh, almost 47 uh, signatures uh, and, and uh, I just checked now and it was almost 48,000. So I think we will be able to file uh, it, uh, the, the bill as a uh, law motion to the parliament. Um, why uh, there is this high upgoing level uh, from, from July is that the media wanted to, to give this some, some time and, and uh, Elisa Altola, who is a philosopher you might know, and I was invited to, to the TV to give an, an speech or discuss the proposal and, and our relation to animals in general. And also Visa Kurki was giving an interview to the radio and our campaign group it had been really active during, uh, from July forward and, and that has been giving a quite good result. But it has been, I have to say, a really nerve-wracking uh, weeks and days because, for example, last, uh, last evening the, the site was crashed down. So, yeah, so it has been, but it looks good like uh, as it is now. Uh, I'm also saying that I'm an activist, uh, so uh, it has been um, a learning curve for me as a person to, to be
I have been in media a lot because I was the first one in Finland who who defended by a doctoral thesis um, animals and our relations with animals in terms of law. So the media have always been quite interested of uh, of my work. But it, in this position I have now, it has been really interesting to see and to explain the content in the, in the proposal. And uh, I can't overemphasize how important the contact with the media uh, is. Um, interestingly, the, the journalists oft, often say when I explain the content, the generally uh, content in the proposal, they say, but what do you mean? Then we can't hunt, can we eat still animals? All the uh, questions many of you have already addressed uh, before. And I always say, oh great, you have understand it totally right. <laughs> we need to change that, the whole um, aim with the, with the proposal. And then we can start to, to talk about uh, the content. Um, in the beginning, of course, mostly my colleagues, not other people, but mostly the colleagues um, were laughing, were surprised, were saying all the stuff uh, the people here in their pre presentations have addressed. The concerns, the fears, all, every, I have heard it all. And I usually say to my colleagues, if this is difficult for you, I have heard, for example, um, over my dead body, the animals will have fundamental rights. And I always say, please, every morning, sit on your bed and say repeatedly, fundamental animal rights, fundamental animal rights, <laughs> fundamental animal rights. And when it doesn't feel bad anymore, read the content in our proposal with your new eyes. Uh, no one is laughing or uh, saying, it will never happen again, uh, or uh, it will never happen. I don't hear that kind of comments anymore. So I, I think it's really important that we are brave enough to change our language and to really think what, where are the keys to make this world be, be, better for the animals and, and, and live in a respectful way with other uh, sentient beings. Um, um, and we shouldn't be afraid of the reactions, just keep our uh, focus in our best uh, understanding of the legal tools and the content. So the content in the uh, proposal is uh, divided in five sections. The two first one uh, is general sections where we uh, lay down the principles of precaution, necessity and proportionality and the content in the sections 3 and 5, uh, the substantive uh, um, uh, content in those chapters are, or, or sections are actually uh, already laid down in the Animal Protection Act or Animal Welfare Act uh, which we will have on place uh, from January next year. Um, and these acts are based on the welfare paradigm, so um, it's the same story we already have with the Animal Protection Act, act that there is not left a lot uh, for the animals in reality. Uh, I don't have, of course, time to go into the content in details, but you can read the English version on these web pages, and there is also one article I wrote uh, about animal law in general, uh, which is not uh, uh, important in this context, and animal rights in particular, where I present the, the proposal. But I want to say a couple of words of um, uh, the, the first section in the proposal. So it's a general uh, um, uh, provision on protection of animals where we say that sentient, sent, sentient animals are individuals um, uh, whom uh, you, humans must protect for animals' own sake, so <coughs> the animals have an intrinsic uh, value. And all animals shall be presumed 
to be sentient unless otherwise can be determined. So that's the principle of precaution. And in my personal view, I think the subsection 2 is the most important and practical uh, provision uh, or section. Uh, the interest and individual needs of animals must be taken into account in all private and public activities that have a significant impact on their living conditions or changes of uh, chances of survival. And I think that is something most of the, the authorities and, and public can, can relate to, that we need to take animals more into account. We are also laying down standings for animals, and our thinking is that it should be lawyers uh, with special expertise in, in animal law. Uh, also in animal law meaning uh, the, the animal rights uh, law perspectives. And also in, in line with the current, current um, other uh, provisions in the Finnish constitution, the responsibility of safeguarding of the protection of animals is the responsibility for everyone. And in the section two of the uh, proposal, uh, we lay down uh, the, the um, principle of, um, of uh, necessity and the principle of proportionality. And the grounds for restriction have to be acceptable and necessary for basically so societal reason. Uh, that's the, the, the main uh, uh, content in the principle of necessity. But in the rational, we have also combined it with the right to life we are laying down in section 3, subsection 1, I think, or 2, uh, and, sub, uh, and section 4, subsection 2. So uh, what we are saying is that it can't be justified to take a life if it's not necessary for our own survival, for the protection of an animal, or protection of a uh, species or the environment. So what we are asking is that the systematic uh, killing uh, and taking lives and destroying habitats has to be justified uh, in accordance with the principle of uh, necessity. Um, I think um, one last comment, uh, you, John, were talking about domesticated animals, and unfortunately I don't have time to go into the material or substantive uh, content of the proposal, but what I would want to say is that we don't want to talk about the domesticated animals, we talk about animals that are in need of human care, because we want to change the language, and in our thinking, domestication is anthropocentric as a term itself, and therefore we try to use a different language also in the proposal. So, in sum, what does this mean? Because it's uh, uh, constitutional provisions, it's uh, binding for the legislator, it's binding for the public authorities, inclu inclusive the courts, of course, and it's binding for the individuals, as I said for a moment ago, moment ago. And the principles of precaution, necessity, and proportionality limits the use of uh, animals for human purposes and promotes and respect for coexistence between humans and non-humans by framing the interpretation and application of the material content in the proposal. And most importantly, animals' legal status in relation to humans is strengthened in the relation, uh, in the relation to humans, and for example, through the establishment of uh, standing. Um, and finally, I would want to say that there is no way, no, no one way to, to change the world and the society and our acting uh, uh, in relation to other uh, animals. 
and there is not one language we all have to use. Um, and I, I hope that our, the Finnish proposal or the Bill of Fundamental Animal Rights can at least um, give some ideas uh, for you to take further in your own country. And I think that the living hell, billions of, pe of animals are living in and, and dying in, has to change. And so do the law. And we don't have a minute to, to lose. We don't have time anymore. Thank you for your...